subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 1st of October. Indian PM Modi launches campaign for garbage-free water secure cities. Bangladeshi diaspora holds anti-Pakistan protest in Geneva demands apology for 1971 genocide. And Sri Lanka ends COVID-19 lockdown amid economic worries. Some restrictions remain. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched two flagship schemes, Clean India Mission Urban 2.0 and the Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation 2.0, aimed at making all of India's cities garbage-free and water-secure. He said garbage mounds in cities will be processed and removed completely. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched two flagship schemes of the central government, the Swachh Bharat Mission or Clean India Mission Urban 2.0 and the Amrut Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation 2.0, aimed at making all of India's cities garbage-free and water-secure. The Prime Minister said that presently India is processing about 70% of the daily waste. The next step is to take it to a complete 100%. The Clean India Mission's second phase will focus on source segregation of solid waste and utilize the principles of reduce, reuse and recycle and remediation of legacy dump sites for effective solid waste management. The Amrut 2.0, on the other hand, aims to provide 100% coverage of water supply and sewerage to all households in around 4,700 urban local bodies and 500 Amrut cities. कूड़े कचरे को छांटा जाएगा, रिसाइकल हो पाने वाली चीजों को प्रोसेस किया जाएगा, अलग किया जाएगा। इसके साथ ही शहरों में बने कूड़े के पहाड़ों को प्रोसेस करके पूरी तरह समाप्त किया जाएगा। प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी हैड लॉन्च्ड क्लीन इंडिया मिशन्स फर्स्ट फेज ऑन सेकंड ऑफ अक्टूबर 2014 हिमसेल्फ वील्डिंग अ ब्रूम। द कैंपेन फोकस्ड ऑन गेटिंग रेड ऑफ ओपन डेफिकेशन एंड फ्री इंडिया ऑफ रबिश बाय 2019। द नेशनवाइड क्लीनलीनेस ड्र one terrorist was killed in an encounter with security forces in the Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Friday, police said. Security forces launched a cordon and search operation at Rakhma village in the district following information about the presence of militants in the area. The search operation turned into an encounter after terrorists opened fire towards the security forces during retaliation. The encounter broke in the wee hours of Friday and the operation was underway till the last reports came in. This comes days after a Pakistani militant belonging to Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit was captured alive during an anti-infiltration operation along the line of control on Uri sector of Jammu in Kashmir. India has long blamed neighbouring Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to mount attacks on Indian soil. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Moving on, scores of members of the Bangladeshi diaspora staged an anti-Pakistan protest on Thursday on the sidelines of the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva, demanding apology from Islamabad for the 1971 Bangladesh genocide. They highlighted mass atrocities committed by the Pakistan military in 1971 and the systematic killing of around 3 million people for seeking self-determination. Members of the Bangladeshi diaspora living in Europe held an anti-Pakistan protest on Thursday on the sidelines of the 48th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva demanding apology from Islamabad for the 1971 Bangladesh genocide. The protesters highlighted in 1971 Pakistan military committed one of the worst mass atrocities 
that the world witnessed in the 20th century, systematically killing around 3 million people for seeking self-determination. They urged the United Nations to globally recognize the atrocities as genocide and initiate trials against the perpetrators. Pakistan didn't apology to the Bangladesh and in, still now the Pakistan in Balochistan there is a genocide. In, in Shindi, in Kashmir, in Jammu Kashmir there is a genocide. So we are demanding Pakistan should be apology to the Bangladesh and United Nations internationally have to recognize the Bangladesh 1971 genocide. Well, obviously Pakistan played a very dirty, very, very a mean role. So I think that should be internationally recognized by international bodies such as the United Nations, European Union, uh, the Council of Europe, other organizations related to human rights, uh, not just to make sure that future cases of genocide are prevented, but also to honor the victims of this genocide where hundreds of thousands of people died. Pakistan carried out military crackdown from 1948 to 1971 on its eastern wing, now Bangladesh, to suppress Bengali calls for self-determination. Bangladesh ultimately won independence with India's help in December 1971, following a nine-month war against West Pakistan. Pakistan has had deep ties with the Taliban and for many years been under fire from political quarters across the globe for providing a safe haven to terrorist outfits, including Al-Qaeda. The Pentagon on Thursday said the U.S. has honest concerns that Pakistan has been a safe haven for terrorists and the apprehensions it has had for a long time now are still valid. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby on Thursday said the U.S. has honest concerns that Pakistan has been a safe haven for terrorists and the apprehensions it has had for a long time now are still valid. In a news briefing, John Kirby said that Pakistan must remember to uphold its equities and responsibilities with respect to terrorism in that part of the world. Pakistan has had deep ties with the Taliban and has been accused of supporting the group as it battled the US-backed government in Kabul for 20 years, as well as providing a safe haven to terrorist outfits, including Al-Qaeda, among others. Islamabad has denied the charges. As a neighboring nation and an important neighboring nation, Pakistan you know, certainly has uh, equities and responsibilities with respect to uh, terrorism in that part of the world. And we've been very honest about our concerns with Pakistan for a long time, uh, about the safe havens that exist on their side of the border and along that spine. Um, and those concerns are still valid today. Kirby said that the United States is well within its rights to conduct airstrikes in Afghanistan as a means to curb the terror threat, even though its ground troops left the country over a month ago, ending a 20-year war. Taliban has accused the U.S. of violating its agreement during withdrawal of troops by continuing to fly drones over Afghan airspace. Earlier this week, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, in testimony to the Senate Armed Services Committee, where he and U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin were questioned by the Republicans and Democrats about the chaotic aftermath of the U.S. withdrawal, warned the Taliban remains a terrorist organization which has not broken ties with Al-Qaeda. Though Islamabad has not yet formally recognized the Taliban-led administration, Pakistani officials say the issue of formal recognition would come at a later stage. In news from Afghanistan, since the Taliban took over Afghanistan on August 15, the country has been plunged into economic crisis as the nation's international assistance has been largely cut off. With the change of government, closure of borders, especially the closing of air corridors, taxi drivers in the Afghan capital are facing a decline in business due to a lack of passengers traveling to and from the airport and borders. <music> Taxi drivers in Afghan capital Kabul said on Friday they are facing a decline in business due to a lack of passengers traveling to and from the airport and borders. A limited number of aid and passenger flights have been operating from the airport. 
However, normal commercial services have yet to resume since it was closed in the wake of the chaotic evacuation of tens of thousands of foreigners and vulnerable Afghans that followed the Taliban seizure of the capital. The Taliban government in Afghanistan appealed last Sunday for international flights to be resumed, promising full cooperation with airlines and saying that problems at Kabul airport had been resolved. This came as the new administration stepped up efforts to open up the country and gain international acceptance following the collapse of the Western-backed government. Since the Taliban took over Afghanistan on August 15, the country has been plunged into economic crisis as the nation's international assistance has been largely cut off. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. The island-wide quarantine curfew in Sri Lanka to curb the coronavirus spread was lifted on Friday morning after 41 days. Sri Lankan clothing and textile vendors have welcomed the easing of restrictions but have expressed fears if customers would return. Sri Lanka on Friday lifted a six-week lockdown as COVID-19 cases and deaths declined but will restrict people's movement for work and obtaining essentials only amid economic worries. The government imposed the quarantine curfew on 20th August and extended it three times as the island nation grappled with the COVID-19 surge caused by Delta variant. Sri Lankan clothing and textile vendors welcomed the easing of coronavirus restrictions. However, the vendors said they were unsure if their customers would return as it used to be. Under the new rules, shops and malls are allowed to reopen and public buses to resume operations, albeit at a reduced capacity for both while schools, restaurants, cinemas and nightclubs will remain closed. The ease restrictions came with daily infections falling below 1,000 and deaths below 100 compared to 2,500 daily cases and death toll over 250 when the lockdown was first imposed six weeks ago. A total of 517,199 people have been infected and 12,906 have died, according to official figures. Meanwhile, the government has ramped up vaccination in recent months, with more than 50% of the 22 million people fully inoculated. The fishery sector in India's Jammu in Kashmir is witnessing a boom and providing employment to a lot of youngsters who are setting up their own fish farms with the government assistance. Around 25 carp fish and 14 trout fish farms have been established in Kashmir Valley's Handwara town alone. The fishery sector in India's Jammu in Kashmir is witnessing a boom as youth in Handwara district are setting up their own trout fish farming with the government's help. Under the central government scheme called Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sambada Yojana, around 25 carp fish farms and 14 trout fish farms have been established in Hantwara in Kukwara district of the Kashmir Valley. Beneficiaries of the scheme who were earlier unemployed hailed the initiative and said they are now able to earn their livelihood and become self-reliant. Apart from seed and feed which is being made available to the unit holders, the central government is also providing them 40 to 60 percent funding. Trout fishing is also one of the great tourist attractions in Kashmir Valley 
and it is known as an angler's paradise due to the abundance of the fish. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.